But I do want you to listen to this because there's a lot of interesting things that puts us at um, a timing of these two wars. Well, let me share with you what I'm talking about. Now, just give me a minute here. Will everybody stick with me for the next few minutes as I share this? Let me have you just follow along with me as I read this. I, I wrote on this, uh, uh, completely rephrase it to make this as clear as I can. The invasion described by Ezekiel involves only a limited number of nations which are clearly named, and I'll show you those in just a moment. These invaders are all Muslim nations led by Russia. I'll prove that in just a moment. However, the battle of Armageddon that is referred to here that we just read in Revelation involves the kings of the earth and of the whole world. Now that's very important because automatically you're seeing there's something different about these two battles. Let me give you another example. There are different leaders in these two invasions. The first invasion is led by Gog from the land of Magog. However, the Armageddon battle is directed by the Antichrist, who is the final ruler of the revised Roman Empire. Now, this is where some people started to teach that Gog is the Antichrist, and since Gog is the leader of Russia, Magog, therefore, and you'll remember it many, many years ago when there was a book out teaching that, um, um, <clears throat> help me, the leader of Russia, I got the book, Jorbakov. What? Gorbachev, I, uh, my tongue got in front of my eye teeth, I couldn't see what I was saying. But Gorbachev, and, and many said that he was the Antichrist. I got the book still. And it says he was the Antichrist, and one of the reasons that they could prove it is because he had that, that mark on his forehead. And, and it looked just like a dragon. So everybody says, see, he's the Antichrist. And they, you know, they did this. But see, when you look at this past, these passages, you'll find two different people leading these battles. The Russian-led invasion of Ezekiel 38 and 39 is clearly stated to be from the land of the north and is also described by Joel as the northern army. You can read that in Joel 2. Whereas a very large part of the armies at Armageddon, we just read it a moment ago, will come from the, quote, the kings of the east and is said to come from the east beyond the Euphrates. So now we're going two different directions. This distinctly shows a different battle. After the invasion of Ezekiel, one-sixth of the invaders that survive will be driven into... Uh, uh, I want you to think about this for a second. When you read the statements in Joel, you'll find a very descriptive term of where they'll go. And uh, look at what it says to a land barren and desolate with his face toward the East Sea, the East Sea. But there will be no place for the armies to escape from Armageddon. Matter of fact, the surviving people that survive this army, according to Scripture, will be gathered to Jerusalem for the judgment of the nations. So we got something going on with this that's different. Then we find that the Ezekiel uh, battle, is uh, the army is destroyed, quote, on the mountains of Israel, as we see recorded in Ezekiel 39. There is nothing in any of the passages that indicate that the invasion will reach Jerusalem. However, the armies at Armageddon will fill the land of Israel and will reach Jerusalem and even to the valley of Jehoshaphat. We just read that a moment ago from Joel. Okay, so those are two indicators something's different about these two battles. The armies of Ezekiel's battle will be slain by earthquake, hailstones, fire and brimstone, friendly fire and a plague outbreak, whereas Armageddon will see the visible appearance of Christ who will slay all the armies by the sword that proceeds out of his mouth. 
Those are two entirely different descriptions there. So now it's starting to make obvious sense. These are two different types of battles. The battle of Armageddon is not Ezekiel 38 and 39's battle. The very purpose for the two invasions are very different. Let me listen and listen to this. This is going to be very important to hear this. The Russian invasion, Muslim invasion, is used to bring Israel to repentance. Extremely important. Whereas Armageddon is to bring the judgment of God on the Gentile nations led by the Antichrist and to deliver Israel who will be an impending destruction from the Antichrist. Now watch this. Listen closely. To describe Ezekiel 38 and 39 as Armageddon is totally inconsistent with the message of Ezekiel. Ezekiel's commission was exclusively to Israel. Listen to what it says in chapter 3. Thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. So Ezekiel's letter, his book, his message was only to Israel. Whereas the, the Armageddon battle is regarding the final rebellion of the Gentile power. So here's what we, we find. We find that the messages of Ezekiel throughout all the 48 chapters, we see the prophet describing Israel's sin and the results of the glory of God departing from the temple during his own day. This then is followed by the prophecies which have already been fulfilled, by the way, by the Babylonian uh, nations that overthrew Israel and brought them into captivity. And that's when we get to the book of Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And that's where we find Daniel there in, under the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar. This is all in Ezekiel's day. So we're, we're seeing this fulfilled. But then you get the remaining chapters of Ezekiel 34 to 48, which we find Ezekiel describing the events of the last days, which promises the return of Israel to their land, We'll talk about this in a minute. And ultimately, Israel brought to repentance and seeing the glory of God return to a rebuilt temple during the millennial reign of Christ and His kingdom. That's all Ezekiel talks about. Now, this is so important because there is nothing in any of Ezekiel's prophecies about the final judgment of Antichrist or the judgment of the Gentile nations, but it's only about God's response to Israel when it repents. And I want to say it again. The purpose of this invasion in Ezekiel is to help bring Israel to the place of repentance. You've got to understand, the scripture says there's a veil over them. They are blinded. And, 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 and Paul says their blindness in part has been to our benefit. Because we got grafted into the kingdom. But God's not done with the Jews. God's not done with Israel. He's going to restore just as He has promised in Ezekiel. And we'll show you some stuff about that in a moment. And by the way, since the conversion of Israel occurs at the time of the Russian Muslim invasion, and we know that because Ezekiel 39.22 says, so the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day and forward. That changes everything for Israel. And since Israel has the testimony of Jesus Christ at the midway point, now we'll skip into the New Testament, and we find that is true in, in Revelation 12. We, we know about the 144,000. We know the, the great evangelists that will start evangelizing the world. Then... The Ezekiel invasion must occur sometime in the first half of the tribulation. Okay, is everybody with me? By the way, remember the account in Revelation where the seven seals are broken? The first seal is broken as the rider on the white horse. Immediately, it says, and he brings peace to the world. Immediately, the next seal is broken and there's a rider on a red horse. And it says, he takes peace from off the earth. So there's a massive war that right there. That, that very well could be. Revelation chapter 6, I'm going to say somewhere around verse 3 or 4, something like that. We, we're introduced to another major war. That could be, in fact, where this is. Because 
what, and I'll explain this in a second,